G'day and welcome to the show. Today is the first in a three-part journey and I've chosen to bring along a good mate of mine, Rick O'Brien from the Off-Road Adventure Show. Rick O, where are we going, mate? Well, mate, we're kicking off here in Maori in South Australia before heading north to Alice Springs for the Mighty Fink Desert Race. And then we're gonna make our way across my favourite sand pit in Australia, the Simpson Desert, to end up in Birdsville. Sounds absolutely magnificent, and none of it could have been possible without the help of our good mates at Windsor Caravans, Oricom, and Market Direct Campers. So join us as we show you what's, what's up, up down, down under. It's time to see this land, this land of wonder. It's time to go and see what's up down under. We're just at the starting point of our three episode journey where we'll travel from Murray in South Australia across the Oonadatta track to Alice Springs where we'll hang out for the Tatsfink Desert Race before heading off to Birdsville through the mighty Simpson Desert. With a bit of help from our partners at Red Ark and Windsor Caravans, I'm travelling and staying in the Silhouette XC, suitable for that tough terrain. Travelling with us on this trip, we're lucky enough to have David Cook from Tough Dog Suspension to help us navigate through the outback. Rounding off our team is the off-road ready Alicia from Market Direct Campers in her Robson XTT. Our starting point is right here in the town of Maree, and Macca caught up with Phil, the owner of the Maree Hotel, to learn a bit more about the town. Phil, sort of seems like you're standing inside a piece of modern Australian history here at the pub, you know, if the walls could talk. What is the history of the place? Macker, it was the first building built in Maori, it was all part of the great northern development um, on the back of John McDill Stewart. They got their priorities right, let's build a pub first, so that was built in 1883. Mate, and, and you've captured a lot of the history and held it here, what sort of things can people expect to see when they come and spend some time at the pub? We have uh, outback icons like Tom Cruise, spelt with a K by the way, but there's only one Tom Cruise we talk about in Maori, and that's the Birdsville Mailman. And this has got the, um, uh, the largest collection of all of his facts. Uh, everything about the great man is in, in the room. What sort of accommodation options have you got here for the traveller? Well, we've got ensuite cabins. Uh, we've got uh, uh, the original hotel rooms upstairs, complete with its squeaky floorboards, but uh, they're very, very comfortable and very popular. And that was the call earlier on from someone who specifically wanted a, a room facing the balcony, because the sunrise up here off that balcony is quite stunning. Mate, speaking of exploring, we're going to do a bit more of that today, but thank you for your hospitality, and we are going to be off, but... No worries. We'll see you next time through, and uh, we're going to check out that sunrise again. It was then time to head off along the Udnadatta track towards our first stop, Coward Springs. When we left Maree, it was really the, the start of the Udnadatta track proper. So it was time to pull over on the side of the road, drop a little bit of wind out of the wheels and get our ride better. And that's what it's all about. It's about safety and it's a lot easier on your gear. So when you're out on these roads, it's so, so important to make sure that you actually put the tyres down on the trailer just as much as it is on the car. Obviously, you've got a lot of corrugations and things on these roads, so you want to make sure that you've got those pressures down and you can skip across the top of them. If someone said to you, what do you reckon you're going to see on the Udnadatta track? Most people would say, I don't know, a lot of nothing? Well, that's incorrect. Because not as there are a lot of natural things that are really cool to see, there's also some stuff that's been put there by people. There's these structures and sculptures that are made out of old aeroplanes and pieces of steel and really cleverly done. You know, you could easily spend an hour or two wandering around just having a look at how clever these creative people were. The sculpture park is pure innovation and you know what else is pure innovation? Wall tracks. Well, we all know that adding things to your RV and making it your own is half the fun of owning one. But adding 12 volt appliances, of which there are so many today, can often be a hassle. But if you get wall tracks added to your caravan when it's getting made, it'll make adding them when you please an absolute ease. Wall tracks gives you complete access to all your caravan's 240 volt and 12 volt wiring. So if you want to add something, take it out. You just simply undo the cover and you've got full access to it. Couple that up with something else that's really cool. The accessory slot on the wall tracks will take any of your standard shop fitting products like tail rails, hanging hooks, the list goes on. When you want to add another power point both inside or outside, just open the track, get access to what you want with wall tracks, dead simple. So if you want to save yourself some money, just ask your manufacturer to add wall tracks to your order so you can get out there and enjoy your RV more. 
If you want any more information, just go to walltracks.com.au. You're cruising along the track and you know you're going to be coming up to Lake Eyre if you've done your research. And then all of a sudden, there on the right hand side, there it is. And I'll tell you what, this place is absolutely huge. There's a great parking spot there for you to get out and stretch your legs and take in the view. It's something you're not going to see anywhere else in Australia. I mean, I'm sure everyone would agree that Lake Eyre is one of the most iconic places in Australia. It just pops out beside you. All of a sudden, you're just looking out across this expanse that you're not sure whether it's water or salt to start with. It, it's clearly a lake. And the track brings you to within a couple of hundred metres of where it starts. And there's a big rest area there where you can stop and have a meal. I'll bet you you plan to stop for five minutes, you'll end up stopping there for an hour. After having a bite to eat at Lake Eyre, we decided to push on to our first stop at Coward Springs. This is a beautiful little oasis alongside the Udnadatta track. And after we got all settled in, I caught up with Greg to learn a little bit more about the place. So Greg, tell us a little bit about Coward Springs, mate. What's here for the visitor? Coward Springs, obviously on the Udnadatta track, it's a um, old railway siding and it's a true oasis. You've got um, nice shaded, secluded campsites for people. You've got a thermal pool that comes out at 18 litres a second. It takes about a million years for the water to get here. Wow. Oh, mate, sounds absolutely terrible. <laughs> and there's yeah. a few other things here as well, like this yeah. museum behind it. You know, what we've done is we've restored all the buildings that were originally here. So that's the engine driver's cabin, and that's here our uh, displays and info. Mate, I've heard on the grapevine that you've got a bit of a sneaky crop out here. Tell me about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, OK. Yeah, this is just the perfect place for growing dates. Um, oh, really? Really hot, obviously. We've established about 100 date palms now and um, hopefully we're eating dates at the moment but hopefully in the next few years we'll be supplying, supplying um, uh, dates to the tourists as well. After catching up with Greg it was time to teach Macca how to cook up a storm in his Windsor silhouette. Well we've had an amazing day out on the road today and now set up here in Coward Springs time to put the nose bag on and again a big day for me because as I've said before I am a bush cook not a chef. But my learned colleague here, the truth comes out today, he's actually a chef. Mate, what is for dinner? Mate, you're going to be cooking, can you believe this? You are going to be cooking fettuccine boscaiola. The crew is going to be very, very pleased. Oh, I don't have to make them pleased if you feed them well. Well, you've got some bacon cracking there, that's great. I need you to get this fettuccine in the water for me. Right. All right, we'll get some garlic in on that bacon as well, mate. Garlic? How much do we put in? Oh, just a good solid All squeeze. Squirt. You say stop. Yeah, that'll do you. Just have me home while I go one more. <laughs> get some mushrooms in there, mate. Get those mushrooms Straight in away. There. I tell you what, this is pretty flash in here, isn't it? It is as flash as Michael Jackson, mate. I tell you, I have been as comfortable as travelling. Everything a bloke could want in here. Somewhere to sit, somewhere to cook, somewhere to sleep. Showers outside, but I'm happy with that. It is just so good. I want to get you to put some cream in there for me now. So straight in with the cream? Straight in with the cream, mate. All of it? Yeah, I reckon so. Cool. There's a secret ingredient. Right. You can't tell anyone? You look. Like. Shh, secret ingredient. Bit of tomato sauce, oh, mate. Now, I want yeah. you to be generous. I want you to get it in there. Give it a good squirt. Right, okay. Here you go. Uh, then I'm going to get you to put some parmesan cheese in there for us. All right. How much do I put in? Yeah, a fair bit. Fair bit. Don't be shy, that'll do. Keep going. That, that'll do. All right, mate, that's looking pretty good there. I reckon what we've got to do now is get the pasta out of the water. Drain it off nice as much as you can, but don't be too yeah, fancy look, with it. Just get it in there, all right? I'm hungry. Yeah, right, oh, fair enough. Gonna fade away to normal over here. Yeah. How are we looking? Oh, I reckon it looks all right, mate. It'll be a shame to um to destroy this with our teeth because it looks magnificent. You should smell it. There you go, mate. Oh, uh, look at you go. Oh, you get that inside your dark soul, and I'll get myself a bowl of one. And um, you got any actually, tools for me? Yeah, hang on, remain calm. While we're doing this, why don't you guys check out what's going to be on for the rest of the show? See you soon. On today's show, we'll be checking out some of the old Garn Railway ruins. We'll be camping out under the stars. But coming up after the break, we'll be checking out more of the Udnadatta track. After spending a top night at Coward Springs, it was time to hit the road and continue our journey along the Udnadatta track. 
The Unidata track, it's like a lot of those iconic Outback tracks. It's something you have to experience for yourself. You just can't get the whole feel of it by watching it on telly. There's the sights, the sounds, and even the smells. It really is something special. But it also pays to respect the track. You've got to keep your wits about you out there. You never know what's around the next corner. The Udnadatta track is one of those tracks that everyone's heard of. It's a, an iconic track in Australia, you know, and it's one that I'm sure every four-wheel driver or traveller has on their bucket list. I mean, it's, an, its original purpose was to, to be able to bring supplies in to build the old Gann railway line and, and the townships that popped up along there to, to support that construction. But after that, it just became the lifeblood to those communities. And over the years, it, the track's been graded and it's turned into something that's a whole lot more accessible than what it was perhaps even 20 years ago. But it is still something that you should firmly have on your bucket list to get out and have a look through the middle of Australia. Well, it's an absolute cracker to tick off the bucket list that you the data track. It's an absolute icon of the Outback. Oh, dead right. And it's it's dotted with icons in its own way. You know, we're heading up now to William Creek. And, and what a top little spot. You can't do this track without dropping into the William Creek pub and having a soft drink. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but uh, my stubby collection, stubby holder collection, is getting a lot bigger on this trip. Yeah, definitely. I haven't been out to this part. It's really awesome to be able to come out to this iconic track and uh, to be heading where we're going now. Yeah, well, that pink roadhouse is something else, so I uh, can't wait to get the photo there. So while we keep kicking up the dust on the Udnadatta track, why don't you check this out from Track Trailer? Well, there's nothing new about Track Trailer in the RV market, nor is there anything new about the T-Van in the RV market. But behind me sits a brand new T-Van. Lloyd, what can you tell me about it? We've listened to our customer feedback, we've thrown in some party tricks, and let me tell you, Macca, better than ever. Tell me about the changes you made, mate. Making it quicker and easier for our customers, that's where we can improve, and we have. Let me show you the major party trick. It's called the Skyward Lift Up Deck. You press the button, and you're in. Nothing in the market is this quick to access. Well, mate, that certainly was simple enough, but what about the rest of the setup? Our deck legs are now integrated into the deck itself. And we've pretty much changed everything again with the canvas too. We now use magnetic clips on all of the pull down points and connection points for the tent. Mate, very impressive. That's it, all set up, done and dusted. Yeah, mate, look, uh, the biggest change, those magnet clips all the way around, They're adjustable, and it means you don't catch your fingers. That is impressive. So what sort of features have you got outside here for everyone to enjoy? Well, as you've realised, everything about the T-Van's quick. So this premium kitchen slides straight out, no stabiliser legs, single hand operation, fridge easy access, and lights on the side. This model's fitted with sliding glass windows. And then inside the tent, we've got some real party tricks too. So what sort of stuff have you got in there? Well, we decided that we'd upgrade all of the electrical systems on the van. So now everything Tanami, Canning and Murrinjai Up, which are our top three models, comes standard with a 120 watt solar panel on the roof, a 25 amp DC to DC charger, a full battery management system, and if you're feeling like it, we can even upgrade you to lithium. Mate, pretty much the Swiss Army knife of camper trailers right here before our eyes. So Lloyd, if anyone at home wants any more information, where can they go and find it? Hit us up at our website, tracktrailer.com.au. Pretty straightforward, get into it. Well, how about that? Now let's check out what Rick and Dave have got to say about Tough Dog. Hey Cookie, got a copy? Yeah, go ahead there, Rick. Hey, what well, this track needs some traffic. What suspension are you running under your truck for this trip? Mate, I've got the uh, nine stage adjustable foam cells uh, with the zero to 300 kilo spring and it's eating it up, mate. Yeah, mate, I'm running the foam cells in mine as well, and I'll tell you what, it's doing a really, really good job. Yeah, well, Rick, this is uh, this is where those foam cells come into their own. The gas and the oil are kept separate, which means we can just drive until basically we get tired rather than the shocks running out of puff. Yeah, copy that, mate. If you want more information on what's going to be best for your vehicle, head to toughdog.com.au. Well, those blokes certainly know what they're talking about when it comes to suspension, but coming up after the break, we're going to check out the old Gann Railway. Oh, 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 oh. 
G'day, Macca here. This journey has been made possible by our partners at Market Direct Campers and Off-Road Caravans. To find out more and to see all the latest models, just log on to marketdirect.com.au. We found a little track heading off of the, the main track, so we decided to go and have a bit of a look because there was a bridge in the distance, and wouldn't you know it, it's the old Gan Railway. Now that was something else. I'll tell you what, the construction that's gone into that in the time that would have been a real tough ask, that is just mind blowing. I was out in this neck of the woods about a year ago and I had the, um, the opportunity to visit the old Gan Railway Museum at Alice Springs. So to get out in that country where the actual railway goes through was a great opportunity for me. You know, I really enjoyed seeing the things that I saw in photographs on the wall at the museum in real life. And you can literally get up and touch the things, you know. It's a, it, was a, it was a step back in time and made you appreciate how tough those people did it in the days when they set up all that infrastructure. Every episode that I've ever shot, there's been an uphill section. It's all uphill from here, mate. I think they're trying to tell me something. Yeah, he'll kill you. <laughs> One or the other. Always make you walk up. Never do you walk down. A bit like my father when he went to school. <laughs> uphill both ways, mate. Have a look at this. The original garn ran for the last time in 1980 and is now in the hands of the Garn Preservation Society. The new line is approximately 160 kilometres west of the former line in an effort to avoid the floodplains where the original line was often damaged by floods. After that little step back in time, we had to push on and find our next camping spot for the night, and we found one just outside of Oodnadatta. For me, the whole attraction to getting out here is the camping that you get to do. This is remote, it's isolated, and there's no service out here, so everyone just gravitates towards the fire, the stories start flowing, the laughs are thick and fast. It really is something that it makes it all worthwhile, if you ask me. Well, that's the perfect end to the perfect day. I feel as though I've had a win. And if you'd like to have a win, why don't you check out our competitions, both online or like this one. What's Up Down Under have teamed up with the Caravan Industry Association Victoria. Go make some memories and New Age Caravans to help you get your gecko on. But this competition ends soon. New Age Caravans is still giving you the chance to win a brand new gecko caravan valued at over $50,000. The gecko from New Age has a lightweight compact design which means you can still enjoy all the comforts on the road without it taking up too much space. The Gecko features the tough Alco Enduro suspension, 15 inch alloy wheels and plenty more so you can travel in comfort anywhere. For the runner up prize our mates at Chemec are giving away a $1,000 gift voucher. There are also monthly prizes to be won including six $500 Chemec vouchers and six Family Parks vouchers valued at over $150 each. You can enter every day of the competition and all you have to do is log on to whatsupdownunder.com.au, click on our competitions page and follow the prompts. So get your new age gecko on and go make some memories. Enter now because this competition is ending soon. Coming up after the break, we hit the road to Alice Springs. by our partners at Track Trailer. To find out more and see all the latest models, just log on to tracktrailer.com.au. When you're out on the road, communication is vital, and the best way to stay in touch with your convoy is with Oricom. To find out how you can win big with Oricom, just head to the competitions page at whatsupdownunder.com.au. Well, there's heaps of great prizes to be won, so get online and register now. Market Direct Campers design and manufacture innovative and rugged camper trailers like the one seen on this episode. They also have a range of unique off-road caravans that travel just about anywhere. See their full range of camper trailers and off-road caravans by logging on to marketdirect.com.au. After packing up camp nice and early, everyone was feeling pretty good and they were pretty keen to get to Alice as well. So the decision was made to push on through. Now for the guys towing trailers, they were very fortunate in the trailers they're towing a good quality, it's not a fatiguing thing for them to be towing those trailers, and we made it through without a drama. Well that's the end of the Udna Data track, we are back on the bitumen until we get to Alice Springs, so it's time to lift those tyre pressures back up to highway pressures, keep it nice and safe, and keep it easy on our gear. 
traveling in convoy in dusty, dusty conditions like the Udnadatta track, it really pays to think ahead and pack some spares like another air filter. This one is actually a brand new one that I put in at the start of the Udnadatta track. Can you believe it? I love the flexibility of travel in Australia. You know, our, our initial plan was to stop halfway between our last campsite and Alice Springs for the night, but everyone was in the zone as we refer to it and everyone was feeling good. So we said, let's just push through. We'll catch up a day and uh, we'll make our, way, make our way right through to Alice Springs, which I think was a great decision. So the sun was setting on Alice Springs and I tell you what, this is a beautiful town at that time of the day. And another beautiful sight was the Holiday Park, the McDonald Rangers Holiday Park. All of us were stinging for a shower after a few days in the bush, I can tell you. So the reward for us for deciding to punch through was to get a night at the McDonald Rangers Holiday Park here in Alice Springs. And it was just brilliant. We drove in there, the grass was green, the smiles were big and we had a really good night. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for this week. And it's all been brought to you by our good mates at Market Direct Campers, Windsor Caravans and of course Oricon. Join us next week as we check out the mighty Tat Spink Desert Race. That is going to be a big episode. Make sure you're there. It's a Bobby Dazzler. Come and join us as we show you what's, what's up, up down, down under. under. What's up down under?